Hi, I'm Ray Combs from New Zealand. Previously, I mentioned about Dewey and how he was responsible for forming the Foundation for the Study of Cycles um, in the early 1940s. In this, in this um, discussion, I want to talk about particularly Dewey's paper called The Case for Cycles, in which in the late 60s he summarised all the findings that had happened in the previous um, 30 years and uh, gave a very clear picture of what things were established and what the significance of it was for human knowledge as a whole. Dewey first dis discusses the possibility of a man from Mars who arrives on Earth uh, and will have the space travel but never discovered radio. And he sees that there's this thing which the sound comes out of which isn't being made in the thing. And he finds that somewhere else that sound is being made and it's being sent uh, by these mysterious waves that can't be seen, but that humans know about these waves, radio waves. Uh, and in this case, what it means is the same thing is, or something very close related is going on in two different places. And there's a particular wave of some particular frequency that's oscillating, that's carrying that signal. Uh, and this is a very good parallel, I think, that, that Dewey makes for, for cutting the case for cycles. There's things we don't see going on, there's patterns that are happening in more than one place at a time. So he's giving us this idea of radio waves as a basis of something to think about um, for our foundation for the causes of cycles. He then says, let's, take, let's suppose this man from Mars has a look at the uh, other things that are going on on Earth and he discovers that there's, we've gathered statistics on all sorts of things and that uh, other things have the same sort of oscillation like the radio waves, but they're much slower. So some particular thing takes four and a half years for it to rise and fall and rise and fall. Every four and a half years, more or less regularly, this thing goes on. Um, and um, we don't recognize it as being like a radio wave, but that's because it's so slow. Radio waves go hundreds of thousands of times a second or more, uh, whereas this thing's taking four and a half years to go through its cycle once. But if we were a different type of being that could see these things speeded up millions of times, it would look very much like a radio wave. Dewey states that these findings of cycles mean that there, are, there is organization and laws and structure going on behind the scenes that we don't see, just like the unseen radio waves. That is somehow, I think the word, right word is orchestrating all these different things that are happening. Uh, so he says it's an unseen force and he always refers to it as an unseen force but there's no doubt it is a force that's applying to, to many different things uh, so he asks us to, to think about it in this way he says it's akin to the discovery of germs or x-rays or uh, other forms of radiation um, and the implications of this discovery for every branch of science is, is important it's so important, he says, that it's like if we try to do any branch of human knowledge without the knowledge of cycles, it's like trying to do medicine without the knowledge of germs. We're always going to make mistakes, we're always going to cause problems, and we're not going to know why these things are happening that don't turn out right. The second aspect of this idea of cycles is the prospect of predictability. Um, if we've got some idea of what's coming up, we can be better planned make better plans to avoid the unpleasant consequences of some things. So uh, if, if we knew, for example, one of the most difficult areas to predict is earthquakes, but if we could predict earthquakes, uh, we could save lives. If we can predict economic uh, recessions or commodity price fluctuations, we could take actions that um, would mean that in years where there's not plenty, there could be something else substituted, or in years when there is plenty, we could plant a little less um, and do something else. And he says, if these cycle forces are real, then because of the fact that common cycles are found in very different branches of knowledge, it means that something is going on behind the scenes that there's a much greater unity in nature than uh, was previously thought. And this is a very important idea for the way we look at the world. Instead of fragmenting knowledge into little areas and studying little branches of knowledge, the study of cycles is very interdisciplinary. It looks at many different areas at once and it sees common patterns across these and, and the common cycles and it sees relationship between things going on that weren't seen by other methods. This may sound new agey, but 
I want to tell you that very definitely Edward Dewey was not a new agey sort of person. He was a very careful, very methodical, scientific man with uh, a very um, high degree of achievement in, in his field. Uh, so his conclusions he came to reluctantly. But for example, things like that the motion of the planets may have relationships with events on Earth. This is something that um, no scientist wants to say because he's immediately going to be accused of being an astrologer. Uh, but in fact there are these relationships, so we do need uh, to look at them scientifically. And the universe is a more mysterious place than ever we might have guessed. Uh, I guess Shakespeare said that, didn't he? There are more things on heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamed of in your philosophy.